Hey gang, thought I'd uh, do a quick uh, little chat about One by the Sword. And I've uh, got the game here just uh, arrived, well I don't want to arrive last week sometime, or earlier this week sometime I should say. And I just got back in from out of town and I'm excited about this title. And uh, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the rules are very straightforward, probably only, I think if we're correct here, you know, probably 12 pages of rules. They all seem to be fairly nicely laid out, all in full color. Uh, I spent a little bit of time reading some of them late last night and thought it was mostly clear. However, there are several sections as I've gone through it that I've gone back and looked on PGG early this morning and seen that there are indeed uh, lots of little areas where there are clarifications being requested. <coughs> My first one was on actually the definition of the cards. When you look at the cards, it's got this uh, three here, then a bar with uh, three elements, three numbers split by slashes, and then an event or activity or action. <clears throat> and in the card definitions, it talks about uh, the card being split into or divided into ver vertically into three sections. And you know, that's, I, I look at something vertically as being this way versus horizontally being this way. Uh, and the top section con contains the campaign points, which I assume might be uh, that number, and uh, available when the card is played. And then the center section is the baggage point expenditure, and the bottom section is the special action. So I assume that's that. But that doesn't marry up. And then as I go back to the rules uh, questions in the uh, the forum on BGG, and I'm sure Consim World is similar. And there's only uh, two, four, six, eight. There's ten questions there, but with uh, upwards of a dozen uh, comments on various elements of it. So that's a little disconcerting that we have issues. There are also uh, a huge swag of uh, questions and corrections and applications required for the playbook. And there are some uh, data points missing out of the combat results table. Uh, for instance, there's no 44 uh, in here uh, in the combat results table. It goes 40, 41, 42, 43, 45. Now, obviously, 44 would go in on the 12th column, right? We would put it in there. That's what makes logical sense. And there's some other elements in uh, siege, uh, the siege um, tables and things as well that uh, appear to be wrong or inaccurate as the case may be. Now you may wonder why is the Hex Encounter guy playing a point-to-point -point game? Well, when I looked at this map, we don't need to open up the whole thing because I'm sure you've seen uh, the, 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 the game shrink red videos before, but you get a feel for it just by looking at this here. When I look at this map, it, it's being done in such a manner that the different sized elements on the map are representing different things, which is nice, as opposed to just chunky squares used and they're all the same. So we've got different types of fortresses, different sizes of towns, and it really makes it look more like a map that I'm moving my forces across versus jumping from some uh, arbitrary point to point. So I really like the way the map was done. I like the layout with the putting the cards down for each round uh, on the bottom of the map here. You've got the siege tables and VP tracks on the corner there. And uh, there's a few other bits and pieces here. So this is just one area that was uh, fought over in the 30 years war. But uh, I'm sure we'll see two or three other uh, titles come out uh, for the entire system, uh, entire system, the entire war. And then uh, the counters all look, uh, look pretty good. I haven't uh, punched any yet or clipped them yet, but uh, you see we've got the larger sized counters there for some of the forces. You can see the different nationalities there. And then you've got these large column markers that I think, I don't know why you would do this, but I guess you can. You put them in these little stands. So put these column markers in the stands. I imagine that's what you use those for. I haven't read the rule, all the rules yet. Uh, then you've got the smaller information counters and the leaders and things and uh, tactical chits and stuff like that. A pretty interesting combat system. The designer notes are, are pretty interesting to read. It does seem to me to uh, assume uh, a fair amount of interest in the topic 
uh, you know, it's kind of the the uh, you know Ben kind of jumps into it as though you are au fait with uh, the war and what's going on, and uh, you're only buying this game because you're interested in this war. And I think there was probably an opportunity missed there to engage a broader audience. Uh, and even in the history notes, uh, you know, it's it's it's. It's perfunctory, I think, would be the word I would use in terms of uh, uh, how how much is shared with you about the war. Now, fortunately, I've gone and read a couple of the lighter books that are available on the topic, so I understand a little bit about what's going on. And hopefully, when I, I get around to playing the game, once we see a Living Rules release and an update to the playbook and clarifications and errata out, uh, which I don't know when that'll be, but uh, then we'll play. Uh, until then, it's going on the shelf. Uh, then, I, then I'll hopefully I'll be able to share a little bit of the history and the background of the the war and the activities around the early part of the war, the 16, uh, 1620 odd period through to sixteen forty. I think is what we're. Is that right? It might even be less than that. I have to look at my playbook now. I think the last battle is uh, 1645 and the first so maybe this is a selection across the across the days yeah, 1638 1633 so this is really only covering you know roughly 10 or 15 years of the war so we'll have a I'm sure it will be two or three more volumes you know got to milk the series right keep us buying stuff and, and entertaining us there you have it one by the sword by ben hull very interesting chap I, i've enjoyed the musket and pike series immensely the very limited amount that i have played it and i'm looking forward to playing more of the series uh once i have uh, had some fun with this stuff all right i'm gonna let you go that's all i had for you ciao